The Plains Buffalo were probably exposed to domestic livestock and their inherent diseases early in the 19th century. But the bighorn sheep, secluded by the protection of the harsh Rocky Mountains, escaped exposure to foreign bacteria. It wasn't until much later, near the turn of the 20th century, that white settlers began homesteading the more rugged areas of the American West. And along with courage, ambition, and fortitude, they brought in the necessities for survival. Their horses, goats, cows, and sheep, unknowingly exposing native wildlife to a host of new bacteria. Soon after, in Idaho's Hell's Canyon, the wild sheep population began crashing from a combination of overhunting, new diseases, and competition for grazing territory. By the 1930s, bighorn sheep were extinct in the area. But today, the wild sheep are back. Bighorns from Canada were transplanted to the Hell's Canyon area in the mid-70s, and with careful management, they began to slowly repopulate the area. But the threat of disease never seemed to leave the herd. Outbreaks of pneumonia caused by a bacteria called Pasturella haunted the Hell's Canyon wild sheep, nearly wiping them out in 1983 and again in 1991. By the fall of 1995, it seemed the herd was getting back on its feet. But during a routine census, biologists discovered over 20 dead sheep lying on the hillside north of the Grand Ronde River in Washington State. Those found alive appeared to be sick and coughing. With funding donated from a sportsman's group called the Foundation for North American Wild Sheep, a massive rescue operation was launched. This is probably the greatest blow to what we're trying to do, you know, possible. We're in the middle of uh, trying to restore big one sheep all the way from here up to Hell's Canyon Dam. The whole restoration program seemed in jeopardy. The options were to either kill every wild sheep in the area to prevent the disease from spreading, or try and capture the bighorns, hold them in captivity, and treat them with antibiotics, something never attempted before. Certainly a very large percentage of them, percentage will probably die within the next few days. A lot of them have died in the last few days. Along the bluffs bordering the Snake River, the helicopter darts in and out of sight. It's closing in on a group of bighorns. Now, if you watch carefully, you can just make out their white rumps as they try to dodge the net. Back at base, the word comes in of a successful capture. We got three. As the captured sheep are being unloaded, the helicopter crew reports seeing several bighorn carcasses strewn along the hillsides. But the good news is, they're also seeing live sheep, and before long, they're back in the sky hunting for more animals to capture. Uh, if you need a swab from her, she's 107. We're going to put her in the trailer right away as soon as we do, do our swab. Yeah, 107, we're really starting to get concerned. Antibiotics are administered, and blood samples are quickly taken from each sheep. Then individuals are marked with numbered ear tags. As soon as an animal is processed, it's carried over to the trailer. Hobbles and blindfolds are removed, and then as okay. gracefully as possible, the bighorn is pushed in. Hold up. Hey, hey, hey! Get her! I got her, I got her. Calm down, calm down. Calm down. Okay, hold on, hold on. Wildlife veterinarian Dave Hunter says the captured animals are showing some symptoms of sickness, such as particularly harsh breathing and runny noses. We'll see. They're all getting prophylactic treatment with two different antibiotics so that we can kind of cover okay. it till we find out what we have. In the course of two days, 58 bighorn sheep were caught and transported over 300 miles south to the Wildlife Health Laboratory in Caldwell, Idaho. A week later, 14 more were captured, bringing the total to 72. Amazingly, despite the stress of being taken from the wild, none of the sheep died. Then suddenly, the week before Christmas, three of the captured bighorns succumbed to disease. It was only the beginning. By February 15th, only 12 of the original 72 wild sheep remained alive. 
Yeah, it's frustrating because if you're acting as health care provider, you'd like to think you can keep them alive. But this group was different from the start. Vigilant observation, daily treatments with antibiotics, IV fluids, even the intensive care provided at the Wildlife Health Lab couldn't keep the bighorns from dying. But the effort wasn't in vain. The carcass of each dead animal contains clues that may help find an answer to fighting the disease in the future. When we come back, we'll take you through the basic steps of opening up an animal to perform a necropsy. Now, if you're squeamish, be forewarned. It will be graphic.